just aspirate the core. Now we'll take them up one by one. Number one, division of labor. Division of labor naturally is not only among various levels in an organization, but also in the same level with the various sorts of duties assigned to various employees. For example, some may be administrative, the other may be technical, the other may be related to accounting, and uh, a whole lot of workers related to various uh, industrial uh, production duties. Authority and responsibility. Authority and responsibility are the natural requirements of any organization and they must be clearly defined and they must also be related together. There should be no authority without responsibility and anybody who has been authorized must also be responsible for the actions taken under that authority. Unity of command. Unity of command is very necessary because the workers and other departments all work under a strategy and they have to achieve targets of the organization and therefore they must work in harmony, not only the individuals, but also the groups and teams and various departments and units and subunits, they must have the same unity under a command and uh, should work under that command. Line of authority. Line of authority is a clear chain from top to bottom of the firm. Centralization. The degree to which the command is centralized and the orders flow is the centralization. Sometimes in modern industry and business, it is thought that over centralization is no good. And so now a trend to decentralization has developed, particularly in the progressive states in public sector, there has been a lot of decentralization, but many modern organizations are also following the matrix organizational structure in which there is great decentralization. And therefore, we can say that centralization and decentralization is decided by the organization to achieve the best results which they consider under their strategy are necessary to achieve. Unity of direction. One plan of action to guide the organization, which means that the planning of production or the planning to achieve targets is the same for all people working together in that organization. And that planning demands a certain unity of direction. Rather, the plan determines the direction. Equity. Equity is related to organizational justice. And it may be distributive justice or procedural justice. And it means that people must be treated equitably. That is, according to what they deserve and the rewards and punishments and all these things fall under the rules of equity, which also has links to ethical working of an organization. Order. Each employee is put where he or she has the most value. 
because this means that he or she would be working optimally. So this is order. This is the work order. Initiative. It encourages innovation, which means that the people are free to think and produce new ideas beneficial for the organization and uh, they are not discouraged so they have to come out with their own thinking and that we can say is initiative. Discipline. Still discipline is essential despite the initiative that is everything falls into the organizational discipline, even the new ideas. So whatever rules and regulations have been developed and are laid down in in-house manuals, people must abide by that. And that is also for optimal working of the organization to achieve best results. Remuneration of personnel how people at various levels with the varied nature of duties have to be paid and what are the other perquisites and what other facilities are to be provided to them and this is this needs a whole policy of remuneration which also must be uh, uh, an aspect of equity and justice and organizational ethics. Stability of tenure. It has been found that long-term employees are more loyal and they have more commitment rather than the people who stay for a very short time. And so nowadays there are a number of studies on turnover, and turnover intentions and uh, uh, the organizations try to devise policies so as to retain people and uh, not spend again and again on training new employees and therefore the stability of tenure is considered to be a positive feature in organizations and their management. General interest over individual interest. Obviously, there has been a contradiction between the general interest and the individual interest in the past, but the thinkers like John Dewey emphasized that the organizations must operate in such a way as to bring together the two uh, the individual interest must be in consonance with the organizational interest and organization should think that individuals have their needs which must be fulfilled in such a way that they feel that the organization is their own and its interests are the same as the individual's interest. And aspirate the corps. Aspirate de corps means that they should work together as the armies work together for the same purpose, for the same intent. And this is uh, uh, what leads them to share enthusiasm and creates devotion to the organization. So these are the 14 uh, principles of FAOL which uh, are considered to be the basis of modern scientific thinking in organizations. I think post Ferrodian behaviorist psychologists like B.F. Skinner also had some influence in management with the help of psychology. Yes, in the same days of uh, Fuel and uh, Gilbreth, the developments in psychology and philosophy particularly those of uh, John Dewey and uh, William James, uh, were leading to behaviorist uh, psychology of uh, B.F. Skinner. And uh, later on, people started uh, applying 
psychological studies to industrial workers and this was known as industrial psychology. This later on led to organizational uh, behaviors uh, studies and uh, nowadays it's uh, a regular subject in most of the business study courses at undergraduate and graduate level. So these are based actually uh, in the developments of 1920s when scientific thinking further developed and uh, entered into the domain of psychology and uh, this was also applied to uh, industrial workers in the name of industrial psychology and there were lots of publications on that score. Now these are uh, known as uh, studies in organizational behavior which we'll be taking up in our next program. Expert, could you please explain a little of McGregor's theory X and Y? McGregor divided uh, workers, or rather I would say human beings, into two categories. One, he said, a fall under theory X, which avoid work, are lazy, and do not want to achieve anything. They have to be uh, forced to work. And uh, therefore, this thinking leads to a certain sort of organization and management in which people have to be given targets and then forced to achieve them. Under theory why he said pe people fall who are willing workers. And uh, this theory says that human beings naturally like work and they also enjoy work like as they enjoy their entertainment and layer activities and therefore uh, the managements must treat them positively thinking that they are also uh, work productively of on their own and with their own liking and therefore they don't have to be forced they have to be motivated and rewarded. And that brings us to the end of this program. But before saying goodbye, let us review what we have learned today. The concepts that we studied today are evolution of management theory, scientific management theory, administrative management, bureaucratic management, behavioral management, the Hawthorne study, Theory X and Theory Y. Thank you, students, and I hope you have benefited from this second program of MBA Coal Management course. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>